marks an important milestone in the long-standing relationship between the United States and Japan. The arrival of the USS Ronald Reagan and the welcome that she receives from the people of Japan are visible symbols of our shared commitment to one another and to regional stability. Together, we provide that most critical pillar of international security, one that only maritime services can deliver. Presence around the globe, around the clock, ensuring stability, deterring adversaries, providing leaders with options in times of crisis. 
Our ability to provide that presence depends on our forward deployed naval forces like the USS Reagan and our partnerships with allies and friends like the special relationship we enjoy with Japan. I refer to the United States Navy and Marine Corps as America's away team. However, here in Yokosuka, we have a home, a home away from home, and for that, we are indescribably grateful. This port has graciously hosted our carrier strike groups and their crews since the USS Midway and Air Wing 5 first forward deployed here almost 42 years ago to, to this day. Since then, the United States in turn has fulfilled our commitment to our cooperative maritime security by seamlessly maintaining a carrier presence here in Japan. Midway gave way to independence in 1991, independence to Kitty Hawk in 1998, Kitty Hawk to George Washington in 2008, and now the USS Reagan. Those transitions are a testament to our interdependence. We work together from preserving freedom of navigation to protecting trade to conducting humanitarian assistance, we stand by to support one another on a moment's notice. The most recent example of that in the aftermath of the devastating earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan in 2011. During Operation Tomodachi, the United States Navy and Marine Corps deployed 16 ships, 130 aircraft, and more than 12,000 sailors and Marines to this region. One of the first ships here was the USS Reagan. As evidence of America's commitment to this region, our growing Navy, above 300 ships by the end of this decade, will deploy more than 60% of all our ships and the most modern aircraft to this region by 2020. Thanks to you, we will continue to base a carrier strike group a carrier air wing, an amphibious ready group here in Japan. And we are stationing other ships, other people, other sailors and Marines around this region because of its crucial importance to us, to you, and to the world. So I will end now because I know that the crew of the USS Reagan is eager to get off and return home or make Japan its new, their new home and ready to be good stewards of the relationship we have built over decades. Because of the close relationship we enjoy with the people of Japan and the Japanese Navy, because of the critical importance of this region, because of the fact that we have had a carrier here continuously for 42 years now. The, both the substance of this carrier being here and the symbolism of this carrier being here cannot be overstated. The security measures that will allow them to take a more active role in regional security, but and let's say, unless they spend more on their defense budget, take a more integrated approach to training with U.S., and, and take a lead on missions and not just provide logistical support to the U.S., they'll never achieve that equal status. How do you see the relationship changing as a result of these new security measures? Well, first, we are very supportive of the new security measures that have been put in place and are being put in place here in Japan. Uh, we view our relationship with the Japanese Navy as one of absolute equals today. Uh, we train together. We deploy together, Japanese, a Japanese commander just commanded Task Force 151 off the Horn of Africa. Um, we have many, many exercises that we do. We are very interoperable because of our equipment and because of our training. And so we think that these new uh, measures will deepen that, will strengthen that, 
and will make us uh, better together. Good morning. Uh, I'm Joe Aukwine, uh, Commander, 7th Fleet. Uh, I'd like to say uh, good morning, Mr. Secretary, Admiral Shigeoka, Admiral Inoue, Admiral Yamura, Admiral Domain, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and especially the crew, the Ronald Reagan. It's great to be here. I'm going to be short and sweet on behalf of the crew. I'd just like to say a few words. The, uh, it's uh, great to have this magnificent ship and the crew of the Ronald Reagan here in Yokosuka as part of 7th Fleet. This is another demonstration that our Navy provides to 7th Fleet our best forces for this vital region, our top talent, our best uh, people who are over here, and as well as our best technology. Deployed to Yokosuka, the Ronald Reagan is able to rapidly respond to regional security threats humanitarian assistance, natural disasters, or many other contingencies. We can be ready weeks faster than it would be from a carrier deploying from the west coast. This is a strategic advantage for both the United States and Japan. The officers and men of the Ronald Reagan will be ready. They, just as they responded to Operation Tomodachi, they will be ready to quickly respond to crises that threaten the peace and security of this region. I especially want to thank our Japanese hosts for the warm welcome the ship and the crew have received today. Because of your unwavering support and friendship, our alliance remains strong. The stability, security, and prosperity of the Indo-Asia Pacific depend on deep relationships with our treaty allies and partners. Our, rela our relationship is a testament to that bond. Thank you. Uh, um, at your change of command ceremony here uh, last month, uh, Admiral Swift uh, questioned the need for the demarcation line uh, between the 3rd Fleet and the 7th Fleet, and uh, perhaps as an early sign of how that change um, is going to affect, um, I guess, well, maybe not operations, but the way that command is done, is that Admiral Tyson uh, will be here for the fleet review later this month, uh, which I think is the first time in, in many decades at least that's happened. A lot of people are maybe scratching their heads a little bit about what removal of that line would mean in terms of how the 7th Fleet will operate with the 3rd Fleet in the Asia Pacific. Could you tell us what your interpretation of that is and, and how it may affect things on kind of an, an oper operational basis in this region? That's yes, a great question. Uh, I think it will mean that 7th Fleet and 3rd Fleet will work uh, closer together. You know. Uh, Admiral Tyson is a good friend of mine. Uh, she will be spending more time out here. Uh, we're going to look at what operations that we can work closer to get. Uh, but it's only, uh, I think it shows our commitment to the shift to the Pacific, uh, that third fleet. Uh, you'll see more of Admiral Tyson and her, and her people assisting us in the Western Pacific. Besides of this Reagan's uh, ship swap, there will be additional ship will be assigned over here to Yokosuka, like cutting edge BMD capable ship. What's the meaning and the background of that operation, um, that change? The, uh, so we uh, we have a very capable strike group over here. Uh, not only the carrier and the air wing, we have uh, ships that are extremely capable, uh, ballistic missile defense, uh, especially in this region of the world. Uh, with, uh, right across the ocean from North Korea, uh, we have uh, these ships here in defense of Japan and also in defense of our homeland. It is great to be home. And you notice that I said home. This is where I live and this is where the Ronald Reagan is going to be for a long time. The strength of the Alliance is strong. This marks the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. And today, the alliance between our two great nations provide peace and prosperity throughout the Western Pacific. In honor of this great time in history, uh, we drove the ship past Iwo To in remembrance of the great clash that occurred between our two nations, and shortly thereafter were joined by the Japanese ship Izumo. Alliances are important, and you're looking at it right here. Izumo, Ronald Reagan worked together, the strength of our nation and your nation and you 
working together makes this region safe for trade, prosperity, and continued support throughout the Western Pacific. So thank you very much for coming out to celebrate the arrival of America's flagship, USS Ronald Reagan. At this time, I want to introduce the star of the show, the commanding officer of America's flagship, Captain Chris Bolt. Bolter, come on. Ohio Gazimus. Domo arigato. That's all I know. But I do want to say thank you for such a warm welcome here in Yokosuka today. The crew of the USS Ronald Reagan is extremely excited to be here. We have been preparing diligently for the last year to come represent 7th Fleet and be the center of Striking Force Center Fleet. Aircraft carriers are very special with capabilities that only aircraft carriers have. I'm prejudiced, but the crew of the USS Ronald Reagan is the finest crew in the USS in the US Navy and we are glad to be here as the uh, Forward Deployed Naval Forces Aircraft Carrier Centerpiece. I like to say that life is all about relationships, and the crew of the Ronald Reagan looks forward to building relationships and working closely with the uh, Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. We have worked up specifically in the last month to raise our standards so that we would fit in with the professionalism that exists here. Again, thank you for the very warm welcome. I will take a couple of questions if you have any about the ship and the crew. Hi. We heard, we learned that your ship was upgraded before coming to Yokosuka. Would you please explain that that upgrade will do any good for your operation? Excellent question. All of the U.S. aircraft carriers are basically the same. They, we, are, we pride ourselves on being interchangeable and the capabilities are very similar. USS Ronald Reagan is relatively new in that group of aircraft carriers. So just like a new car, we have the latest and greatest. We have GPS, we have the backup mirror, and we can see what's behind us, and we have some tre tremendous command and control capabilities for the command staff to, to use. So those upgrades are just modernization upgrades so that we can have staying power here in the 7th Fleet and not require any more upgrades for the whole time that we're here. Okay. Uh, we heard, we read on a new, the news release that the USS uh, Luna Lega will bring a new technology to the region. And uh, can you explain what, is, what do you mean the new technology? And uh, I guess, he guessed that, is that including the NIFCA? So, excellent question again. So the new technology, I refer to it as our increased command and control. So the ability to fight effectively is if we can command the forces precisely, we hit our targets, make fewer mistakes. So that increased technology involves that command and control of multiple weapon systems that are spread throughout the strike group. The basic capabilities of the aircraft carrier, our number one mission is the aircraft on board, Carrier Air Wing 5, based at Atsugi. That's the true presence and the advanced striking capability that we bring, and the USS Ronald Reagan is more able to communicate with those assets at range. At the 311, we, uh, Japanese people experienced that issue with the Fukushima nuclear reactor. And then there is lots of uh, Japanese nationals are holding a lot of anxiety regarding the nuclear power. And uh, would you please explain the safety of the, your ship? The safety of the USS Ronald Reagan is excellent. The rules we follow are the most rigorous in the world. Our two nations have worked very closely together to agree on how we would operate <clears throat> nuclear-powered warships in and around the nation of Japan. We adhere to all those rules and regulations exactly. We operate within the, the realm that they were designed to operate. 
I'm proud to say that as far as the danger that reactors uh, may present, that those dangers are extremely exaggerated. Ronald Reagan is probably the safest ship and the safest reactors in the world. And I'm very confident that we will operate these exactly according to the agreed upon uh, rules and regulations that have been established. 100% confident. Excellent. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll close the questions for now. But as we leave the stage here, I want to again thank you for coming out and being here today. My weather forecasters say the weather tomorrow, we're in for a blow. So we pulled in one day early and the conditions were perfect. But you can feel the winds picking up now and so our timing was just right. This is a very good omen for the future of the USS Ronald Reagan that's here stationed in Yokosuka. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.